Hello and welcome to another lesson for A-Level Physics. Today's learning intention is to be able to solve free-fall problems. Free-fall problems are essentially just falling objects. The success criteria for today is to recall that all objects accelerate at the same rate due to gravity. To understand when acceleration due to gravity is positive and when it is negative, i.e. when it's causing acceleration and deceleration. And finally, to solve SUVAP problems in free-fall situations. So a polite reminder from last lesson, we looked at the four equations of motion which are given to us on the formula sheet. They are shown here, where V is the uh, final speed, U is the initial speed, A is the acceleration, T is the time, and S is the displacement. There's no need to learn these equations off the top of your head because they are given to you on the formula sheet on the mechanics section of it. I would have that with you so that you can refer to the formula sheet throughout this lesson. In free fall, all objects accelerate at the same rate, and on Earth, that is 9.81 meters per second squared, because that is what the value of the Earth's gravitational field is. On the Moon, they would all accelerate at the same constant rate, but it would be much lower because of the uh, Moon's gravitational field being weaker. We refer to this as the acceleration due to gravity. The vast majority of the situations that we deal with will be on Earth, and so we will be saying that all things accelerate at 9.81 metres per second squared. But as I mentioned on the Moon, all things would accelerate at a different rate. So it would be much lower. So, moving on, let's have a look at some example questions. We've got here a question that says, A coin was released from, the, from rest at the top of a well. It took 1.6 seconds to hit the bottom of the well, and we were asked to calculate the distance fallen by the coin. So, like we did do on the previous video, we will begin this by laying out our SUVAT and writing down S, U, V, A, and T. Because the coin falls from rest, the value of U will be zero. The value of the acceleration is 9.81 because it is falling due to gravity, and we're, of course, on Earth. And the time it says is 1.6. So to work out the distance fallen, we're working out a value for s, so we use s equals ut plus a half a t squared. Now as you can see on the solutions, I haven't actually done substitution for u multiplied by t. The reason for that is that u is 0, and so anything times by 0 is 0, so ut just simply isn't there, it is 0. So all we need to do is a half multiplied by 9.81 multiplied by 1.6 squared, please don't forget that, to come out with 12.6 metres as the distance fallen by the coin. We then work out the speed just before impact. There is a very common misconception amongst A-level students at the, start of a, at the start of the course. They believe that the speed of an object when it hits the ground is zero, but it isn't. When an object hits the ground, it is travelling at a very, very fast speed, but then of course the ground puts a force on it to decelerate it to zero, so the answer that's, uh, for the speed that something hits the ground that is not zero. We use V equals U plus AT, as we have done previously, uh, doing 9.81 times 1.6 to give us a speed of impact of 15.7 metres per second. Now let's deal with another example. It says, Phil lives on the third floor of a tower block, his window being 11 metres from the ground. His friend Clive is outside the building but stood directly below the window. Clive throws a set of keys up to Phil. They leave Clive's hand at a speed of 15 metres per second. What is their speed when Phil catches them? Now, I've just done a little silly sketch here just so that you can visualise what's going on. Usually in an exam they will give you a diagram, but not always. So it is important that you are able to actually model situations and drawing a diagram can often help. So I've just labelled uh, the fact that the keys are going to have to move 11 metres up. Now, we start off laying out our SUVA just like we would have done previously. We know that S is equal to 11 because that's labelled on the diagram, and he throws them at 15 metres per second, that is the initial speed. Now this time the keys are not falling due to gravity, they're actually moving upwards, but they are being decelerated by gravity. So instead of setting A to be plus 9.81, we set it to be minus 9.81 because the keys are slowing down due to the Earth's gravitational field. 
Now, we need to choose an equation to work out v. The most logical equation to use will be v squared is equal to u squared plus 2 times a times s. Not really a rearrangement per se here, we just take the square root of that right hand side to work out v itself. So we do root of 15 squared plus in brackets 2 times, do not forget the minus 9.81 times by 11. If you've used plus 9.81 here you will get the wrong answer. Uh, the speed therefore comes out at 3 metres per second. Now I'd like to have a go at some summary questions. Practicing SUVAC questions and free fall problems is the best way of revising. So when you see the question on the screen, pause the video immediately, read the question, have a go at answering them, and then press play for me to guide you through the answer to that question. Uh, we'll do the standard demand questions first, then the consolidation, and then the stretch and challenge. A pebble released from rest from a canal bridge takes 0.9 seconds to hit the water and for part A we want to calculate the distance it falls before hitting the water. Like we did do in the previous lesson uh, and with the examples we begin right, by writing our S, U, V, A and T. If you haven't done that when you did this question you must do it now please. You need to be laying out a SUV out like this uh, to make sure you're working out is nice and clear. Now we can write in what we know. We, know, we don't know S, that's what we want to work out. Uh, we know it's released from rest, so you should remember that that means that the speed at the start is zero if it begins at rest. Uh, I don't know the speed it hits the ground at because it won't be zero. Now it is gravity that's pulling it down, so A is 9.81 and then the time is 0.9 seconds. So to find the distance that it falls, we're looking for S, so we need an equation that has S, U, A and T. If we look on the formula sheet, the equation that jumps out at us is s equals ut plus a half a t squared. Now u times t is zero because u is zero so we're simply doing here a half multiplied by 9.81 multiplied by 0.9 squared to give us an answer that is around four meters. Now we want to work out the speed just before it hits the water or the speed of impact you might see it phrased in other questions so I want to work out v. We do have a choice of equations that we could use here. I'm choosing to use v equals u plus at. I know that u is 0, so all that I'll need to do is 9.81, which is a, times by 0 0.9, which is t, to give me the final answer of 8.8 .8 metres per second. Question 2. A spanner was dropped from a hot air balloon when the balloon was at rest 50 metres above the ground. We want to calculate the time it takes for the spanner to hit the ground. As always, we start off by laying out S, U, V, A and T. This method of writing out SUVAT like so is excellent modelling and it's what an examiner will be looking for you to do in an exam question. We write down what we know. So we know it's 50 metres above the ground, so it's going to fall 50 metres for it to hit it. Uh, it was initially at rest, so U is zero, and then it's gravity that is pulling the spanner downwards, so the acceleration is 9.81 metres per second squared. That is something that we need to remember, 9.81 for Earth. Now, we want to find the value of T. I know S, U, A and T, or I know S, U and A, and I want to find T, so we're going to use S equals U, T plus a half A, T squared. In order to simplify this and rearrange it for t, the first thing to do is get rid of ut. Because u is 0, that means this equation can simply become uh, s equals a half a t squared. Now we can obviously uh, substitute the numbers in and do the rearrangement. So we would find that the value of the time should be 3.2 seconds. I now want to work out the speed of impact on hitting the ground. Uh, and I now know that the time is 3.2 as well, that's going to help me a lot. So when I use V equals U plus AT, I'll just do 9.81 times 3.2 from the previous question to get an answer of 31.4 metres per second. Question 3. A bungee jumper jumped off a platform that was 75 metres above a lake and released a small object at the instant that she jumped off the platform. A part one is to calculate the time by the object to fall to the lake. So, start off writing down our SUVAT. Uh, it falls 75 metres, it was released from rest, and again it's accelerating due to gravity, so A is 9.81. I want to find the time taken, which is T, so I'm going to use S equals UT plus a half AT squared, 
but of course ut is going to be zero, so that simplifies the equation to be s equals a half at squared. I can then multiply by 2 to get 2 times s, and of course then divide by a to leave t squared on its own, so we have t squared is equal to 2s divided by a. I want to find t, not t squared, so I now square root that of course, so t is equal to root 2s over a, and we substitute the values in, so we do root of 2 times 75 divided by 9.81, which gives us 3.9 seconds as the answer. <coughs> we now want to find the speed of impact of the object on hitting the water, assuming that air resistance is negligible, of course. So I'm going to use V equals U plus AT. You could have also used V squared is U squared plus 2AS. It wouldn't matter. You will get the same answer. Uh, U was 0, so all I do now is 9.81 multiplied by 3.9, which gives me the correct answer of 38.4 metres per second. Depending on how you rounded your 3.9, of course, that might go on to affect this answer, but you should get about 38.4. Then part B was to explain why the bungee jumper would take longer to descend than the time taken in part A. The reason is that the bungee jumper would um, have a larger surface area than the small object would do. Because they have a larger surface area, that means that the air resistance will act on them will be more, and so obviously the acceleration will be less. Now let's move on to the consolidation questions. A spanner is dropped from a height of 6.83 metres. Assuming there is no air resistance, how fast will it be going when it hits the floor? So as you can see, I've written out S, U, V, A and T, and we plug the numbers in. S is 6.83 in this question. U is 0 because it's released from rest. It is dropped. Dropping again implies that it's uh, been released from rest. And uh, the acceleration is 9.81 metres per second squared because it is falling due to gravity. So I'm going to use v squared is u squared plus 2as, uh, and all I need to do is take a square root here to get a value for v. Um, so we will do root of 2 times 9.81 times 6.83 to give us the final answer of 11.6 metres per second. Question two, a ball is dropped from the top of a cliff and it takes 6.19 seconds to hit the ground. Assuming that there is no air resistance, how tall is the cliff? So I don't know S because that's what I want to work out. The ball is dropped, so U is zero. Uh, it falls due to gravity, so A is 9.81, and the time it takes is 6.19. So we need an equation that links S, U, A, and T. So the logical one to use here would be S equals U, T plus a half A, T squared. Now, ut is going to not be used because u is 0, so that means s is actually just equal to a half times 9.81 times by 6.19 squared, which gives us an answer of around 188 metres. Now, let's have a go at some stretch and challenge questions. A girl on a trampoline bounces 3 metres above the trampoline. Estimate her time in the air and explain any assumptions that you have made. So, we're going to imagine here that there are two stages to the motion because the girl will be moving upwards for part of the time in the air and then she will move downwards for the remaining time in the air. That means that the acceleration will go from being negative when she's moving upwards because gravity will be slowing her down to being positive because gravity will be speeding her up which means we can't use SUVAP for the entire thing because the acceleration changes. So I'm going to choose to work out how long it takes her to get to her maximum height from the trampoline itself. So I'll write down S, U, V, A and T. Uh, she gets to three metres above the trampoline. I don't know the speed that she leaves the trampoline at, but I know that when she gets to maximum height, her final speed is zero. Whenever anything is thrown up into the air, for a brief moment, its speed is reduced to zero. So when you think about it, if you toss a ball up into the air and then catch it again, when it was at its maximum height, its speed was actually zero vertically. Now, because she's moving upwards here, the acceleration is minus 9.81 because she's moving against gravity. So I'm going to use S, V, A and T to work out a value for the time. However, I don't have an equ a equation there 
that's going to allow me to work out t, which is annoying. So what I'm actually going to need to do first of all is to work out a value for u. I'm going to do that using v squared is u squared plus 2as, and I will rearrange this to work out u. So I subtract 2as from the other side to find out then that u squared is going to be 2 times 9.81 minus times 3. And that means that the starting speed of the girl on the trampoline is 7.67 metres per second. Now that I have u, I do indeed have an equation that will allow me to work out t. So we use v is u plus a t, uh, rearrange it for t, and we will find out that that comes out as 0.78 seconds. But it takes as long for her to get to maximum height as it does for her to get from a maximum height back to the trampoline. Uh, it's like symmetrical, if you like. The amount of time up will equal the amount of time coming down. Therefore, we need to double that 0.78 to reach the final answer of 1.6 seconds being the time that she is actually in the air for. We were asked to explain any assumptions that we've made. The assumption that, we, that we've made is that the air resistance is negligible. And now for the final question, question two. An astronaut on the moon threw an object four metres vertically upwards and caught it again 4.5 seconds later. When we consider the SUBAT on this occasion, though, A will not be 9.81 because on this occasion we're dealing with a problem that is not set on Earth. We are on the moon and we don't know the acceleration due to gravity on the moon. So I lay out SUVAT again, S is 4 because uh, it far, um, goes 4 metres upwards, but I'm going to consider again the time to get to maximum height because the acceleration will go from being negative when the object's moving upwards to being positive when the, uh, when the object's moving downwards. So just to get to maximum height, the distance is 4 metres. I don't know the speed that it was thrown at. Its final speed, its speed at maximum height is going to be 0. Uh, the acceleration on the moon I don't know off the top of my head and the time is 2.25 seconds uh, because of course if it takes 4.5 seconds to get caught it must uh, take 2.25 seconds, half of that is, uh, to get to the maximum height. Now it's actually easier to do part B here first to work out the speed of projection. So we'll do part B first, uh, rearranging that equation there to find that the speed of projection is 3.6 meters per second. Now that I know that, I'll go back and do part A to work out the acceleration. Uh, acceleration is change in velocity over time, or V uh, equal G plus AT. Either way, you will get an acceleration due to gravity of 1.6 meters per second squared. For part C, it says, how high would the object have risen on Earth for the same speed of projection? Now, that means we need to do a different SUVAT one where a is actually going to be 9.81. Uh, technically minus because we want to see how high it rises and it's moving upwards against gravity. So it's got the same speed projection, 1.6. The speed at maximum height is 0 and the acceleration is minus 9.81. So we, we use v squared is u squared plus 2as. I need to rearrange that equation for s. So because I'm adding u squared onto the right hand side, I take u squared away. Uh, and then I divide by 2 times a to leave me s on its own. Uh, and the answer after substituting the values in is 0.66 metres. I hope you found this video useful and you will, get a, you will definitely get a pre-fall problem like this in your exams.